What's going on guys? Next day here working on the 0124 valve. So we have a mission we are trying to accomplish here with the front axle. We need to loosen the upper and lower control arm bolts. The uppers should not be so bad because they've already been taken out and replaced with brand new ones when the lift was installed. The lowers, however, did not need to be taken off because Rough Country's lift kit comes with a drop bracket for the rear portion of the upper and lower control arm. So beneath like the driver's door. Therefore, you didn't actually need to remove the lower control arms. The uppers you did because of the new bracket plate and stuff, but the lower, you didn't have to. Therefore, the bolt is completely seized up. We put tons of PB blast on it last night, a couple times. It's about 10 hours since we did that, so it's had some time for the oil to soak in. I don't know how well this is gonna go. It might go good, it might, might not go good at all. I'm very nervous about this, but you know, worst case scenario, if a bolt breaks or something, we'll just have to buy a new bolt, but uh, let's hope that it doesn't come to that because that would suck. Don't have much shop space when you're running 14 wides on each side. Here's what we've got going on here. So we've got a 23 millimeter wrench on the nut there for the lower control arm and I have the jack on it, and we're just going real slow. There's not many other ways I can do it in my shop with the stuff that I have. I wish I had, you know, lifts and torches and all that crazy stuff. I just don't at the moment still. So I'm just taking this real nice and easy, just very slowly and watching that nut and bolt and just seeing what happens. When we started doing it at first, the bolt um, I couldn't tell if it was the bolt and nut rotating or just the nut, but we were starting to get a little bit of rotation out of it. So we're just gonna go nice and slow and see what happens. We had the absolute best case scenario happen and the bolt head, where's it at? Yeah, it, it just snapped off. It just came right off. So now what we have the pleasure of dealing with is getting out, if it'll focus, that seized up bolt that's ran, of course, through that lower control arm, seeing if there's any way we can hammer that thing out of there and getting a new bolt. We finally got some progress. It's been probably another two hours since I picked the camera up last. We got some progress and it's already 3.30 in the afternoon. I've been out here since like 9.15. Unbelievable how long this takes when you don't have all the right tools. We're making it happen nonetheless with manual tools. My impact actually took a crap on me, so I've been having to break these bolts loose with just wrenches and taking the sledgehammer to it. And that's been, that's been my method so far. So I'm actually gonna run to Napa now. I gotta pick up a new control arm. We did get the lower control arm out. My plan was to just keep these obviously and just loosen the bolts and uh, rotate the axle and give it the clearance that we needed for the four wheel drive to be able to work. What happened was the bolt head just rotated off as I showed you previously. And so I had to cut the bolt out which led to cutting up some of the bushing and all the other stuff in there. So um, it's not gonna be perfect. Therefore, we are getting a new lower control arm with new bushings and all that other stuff. And we got some brand new bolts as well, some new hardware. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get to that though. But that's what it looks like right now. I've got the axle under jack stands. The rear tires are chucked. Um, truck's not moving, it hasn't budged since we started. So as long as everything stays where it is, which it should, it's been like this all day now, uh, I gotta go pick up the new lower control arm, run the bolts through, and then we can adjust the axle. Actually, while it's still on the jack stands, I'm going to slowly pivot the axle to make the adjustments and then tighten the bolts down in place and probably buy a new air gun while we're at Napa as well, if they carry them, I don't know. But uh, I think it's time this thing freaking retires. And just like that, it's all back together. Thank goodness. I'm telling you, breaking bolts loose with the wrench in the beginning before I bought a brand new impact. This is the one that I used to have, cheap junk, but I got a brand new uh, Napa air gun, in fact, air gun. It is the next morning we did get that 24 valves front drive shaft issue all sorted out. Anyways, we're on our way right now to reveal to you, if you have not already seen it, circling and surfacing on social media, the ads running online and stuff like that. If you haven't seen it yet, you're about to find out 
exactly which truck we bought and which truck you now have the opportunity to win. If you want to enter to win it, hit the link in the description or type in lmpgear.com, buy anything off the store, and for the first week, every $1 is 20 entries towards winning that truck plus $5,000 cash. Our 22nd diesel truck giveaway and probably going to be one of my absolute favorites of all time, hands down. And I'll tell you the little backstory on this truck right here. So guys, this is a 1992 Dodge W250, 12 valve Cummins, intercooled, four wheel drive, all that stuff. It's, it's, it's cool, like the truck is a super cool truck. It's a super clean truck, all that stuff. That makes it a great truck, but not only all of that, but this is the first truck to ever make it onto this channel. And this was the first video I ever filmed was with this truck right here. So this is where it all started. When it comes to the videos, when it comes to the Instagram page, the Facebook page, the giveaways and all that stuff, everything that ever came about, me meeting my wife, Reagan, to then having our son. Everything that has ever happened after I started YouTube, it started with this pickup truck in a YouTube video. It went from there. You know, we made our first video. It got like almost 90,000 views. Just from that point on, that's where it all started was with this pickup right here. So I just want you guys to fully understand that so you appreciate the truck even more for those of you who are longtime viewers or your longtime customers. Everything started with the very first video that was picking up this truck from Columbus, Ohio. Real quick, let me just say that it is like negative 10 out here and with my LNP heavy duty work coat. So it doesn't feel that bad. I mean, my fingers are getting cold, so I grabbed some gloves. Hopefully we can sell some gloves here soon. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? Coat's super nice. If you guys have not checked them out yet, I'm telling you, they're well worth the money. You'll get your use out of them, trust me. I know there's a lot of questions and a lot of people are probably asking a ton of questions in the comment section right now. And I'll answer some of those questions in a little bit, but let me go into the details on the truck here first. The truck has new paint on it. It has a new grill on it. This is not an OEM Dodge grill. So it doesn't say Dodge on it, but it's new grill. Headlight bulbs or LEDs. Take a little look under here. Very, very clean. Four wheel drive, of course. That would just be weird if it was all lit there. It's a two wheel drive. The bed liner, I don't know how many of you guys remember that video. That was also one of my first videos. One of my first probably 20 or 30 videos I ever filmed was putting the bed liner in this truck. We got that annoying buzzer. I remember the comments about that buzzer for weeks after picking this thing up. Everybody's like, disable the buzzer, disable the buzzer, disable the buzzer, you know, driving them crazy. Original seats, 86 thousand miles can you can you guys see that clearly this is 86 oh, come on focus 86 thousand freaking miles on this thing and it's not a five digit you know odometer reading i know some people like to say oh it's five digit you have no idea what it really is well this, this is an actual 86 thousand mile truck door panels are in freaking perfect shape nothing's ripped off switches are all in there everything's good everything works most importantly, everything works, everything functions. You've got all the gauges up in here, your boosts, exhaust temperatures, transmission temp, everything. Heat and AC, everything works. New headliner in the truck. I mean, it's, it's a beauty. It's a beauty. If you want this truck, if you want to take a chance at winning this truck right here, this is a piece of history right here. I'm gonna answer some questions. I know there's a lot of questions piling in. This is a beauty right here. So of course the giveaway is live right now. Head on over to lmpgear.com. Every $1, 20 entries to win only for the first few days and then 26 entries are gonna be gone. Let's go into detail on why we're giving away this truck. I know there's gonna be a lot of questions. Um, head's getting sweaty, believe it or not, with this hood up. There's gonna be a lot of questions. Why are you giving away that truck? You know, isn't that your dad's truck? 
You know, why don't you keep it for yourself? Why doesn't your dad keep that truck? Why, if that was my truck, I'd never sell it. You know, all the questions, all the comments, all the stuff. And I don't have to justify any of those things, but I'm gonna go into detail for the people that genuinely just wanna know. My dad has this truck. He has that truck, which is his freaking work truck. I mean, plowing, hauling bales in the bed, all that stuff. That truck's got, if you guys have ever seen the playlist on this truck, you know everything we've done to it. The flatbed, airbags on the rear end, compound turbos, big injectors, governor springs, valve springs, I mean, just everything. That truck has been completely gone through to be made into a work horse, and that's what it is and he likes to use it for that purpose. This truck, however, there's not a lot of these out there, especially not in this kind of condition. So he wasn't gonna use this as his, you know, his work truck, his plow truck, his, you know, all that other stuff. Second gens are a dime a dozen. They're freaking everywhere. They're cool trucks and it's good to take care of them, but they're everywhere. These, not so much. It is very cool. And my dad, he was actually just out here about 10 minutes ago and he said, this is honestly probably the coolest truck I have ever owned just because of how cool it is and how hard it is to find these and uh but he doesn't drive it and that's why he doesn't like owning it currently he likes having it just to be like oh yeah if people ask oh i love old first gens he's like oh yeah i've got a really really nice one you know but other than that he's like he, i don't drive it and he's got the king ranch he's got the second gen flatbed right there he's got a 392 scat pack you know sports car that he drives all summer so it's like the only time of year he would drive this truck he doesn't drive this truck because he's got so many vehicles that you know it's a good problem to have but the truck just sits in the barn. This truck has sat since our truck meet that we did in September. For all of you that were there, that's how long this truck has sat since then. He only got it out for that event, and then that was it. And I am purchasing the truck to give away to you guys. It's what I wanted to do, and I just want you guys to really quick understand something. I know there's gonna be comments. Why don't you keep the truck? Just keep it, keep it, keep it. The thing of it is, and as special as this truck is to me, I can't keep all the vehicles that I go through, especially the trucks. The trucks are part of the business. This is how we make our living. This is how Reagan and I pay the bills and stuff. We cannot just keep every single truck that we think is super cool. Like, oh, just keep it, just keep it, just keep it. I would love to keep this truck. I'd love to keep most of the trucks that we bought. Just financially, just it does not make sense to just keep them. So I hope you guys can understand that. I can't just, you know, have a $20,000 truck sitting in my barn and I would feel just as bad driving it as my dad would and I'd end up not really driving it hardly ever. And then if I did drive it, I'd feel bad, you know, leaving any salt on it. So I'd be out there trying to keep it clean all the time. And it just would be one of those trucks that I'd love to own. It would be a bittersweet to own it because I'd love to say I have it, but I would hate actually working it and putting it through the paces and getting it dirty and taking it out in the woods and all this other stuff. It's like, it's just not the truck for that to me. That's that's just my theory. I know that there's guys that are like, oh, I don't care how nice the truck is, I'm gonna work it. That's fine. For me, I couldn't do that. So it doesn't really do us a whole lot of good sitting here never being driven when I know there's one of you guys out there that would love to drive this thing every day of the week and you would just be ecstatic to own it. And that's why we're giving you the opportunity right now. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I know there's gonna be some people who are kind of like upset about this, but there's also gonna be a lot of you that are excited that you may be the one owning this truck next. If you have not done so yet, please leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet. Hit the notification bell so you actually get the notifications and most importantly, the thing that keeps us all going, head on over to lmpgear.com, buy anything off the store, and you're automatically entered to win this truck plus $5,000 cash in return for your support in what we do. Thank you guys so much. I will catch you in the next video. Peace.